watching KPIX Channel 5. Now, live, Eyewitness News at 10. Can U.S. companies recapture their competitive edge? Money reporter Craig Miller sees a window of opportunity and tells you how it could benefit Bay Area businesses. We all know Japan sells plenty of cars in America, not to mention television sets and VCRs. With a lock on the auto and electronic industry, the big question here is, can American companies ever catch up? And wouldn't you know, our money reporter, Craig Miller, would be here with some ideas about that. Well, this will give you some idea, Mac, of the dilemma. Uh, it's a new survey by the Semiconductor Industry Association down in San Jose about American attitudes toward high tech. And look what they found. We'll do this family feud style, okay? <laughs> Statement. High tech is going to be a strategic part of the nation's future. Agree? Survey said. 96 percent, virtually everybody, it's unanimous. All right, next statement. The U.S. will be the world leader in technology 10 years out. Who agrees? Survey said 12 percent, only 12 percent. Yipe. In other words, we got to have it, but there is no confidence that we're going to get it. All right, well, a small piece of the solution may be in my hand. We've shown you this before. This is the uh, part of the Frox system made down in Sunnyvale. What it is, is the cutting edge in home remotes. With it, with the one button and the rest of the $10,000 system, you can control audio, video, potentially lots of things around the house. What it represents is the taking back of our own destiny. What we have here is a totally digital audio video system. What it is doing is digitalizing both audio and video from the processors that we have here and giving a picture that is equal to HDTV. What we have is a, the ability to control it with a one-button wand. By simply pressing the wand, the grid for the product that we're about to use comes up onto the screen. The Frox system itself is a dazzling example of American know-how, and it may be the best chance in some time to zap Japan's long-standing dominance in home electronics. Last year, more than half the business worldwide was controlled by Japan, another fifth by European companies, and only 6% by the U.S., the country that conceived of TV. The Americans have always had the edge in computer design, and where the Japanese have always had their edge is in televisions. Bud Meyer's edge is in combining the two. His company's home entertainment system has the same internal engine as some of the souped-up workstations made for engineers and architects. Thus, the marriage of computers and consumer electronics is consummated. Where that intersects near in the future, is who supersedes who. Well, the Americans take the computer market from a television standpoint where everyone can use it now that you have a remote control like this and access it, or will the Japanese get smart and learn how to put computers into television? Don't think it hasn't entered their minds. When American companies hit the market with a glitzy new multimedia product like Apple's QuickTime, the Asian press appears in droves. At stake are billions of dollars and probably thousands of new jobs. The convergence that is going on between industrial electronics and consumer electronics uh, provides a terrific opportunity for some U.S. electronics makers to move back into the mass volume part of the electronics industry. And that means, of course, consumer electronics. We have an opportunity to engage the uh, uh, worldwide home market in a big way with U.S. talent. In a sense, it is more than an opportunity. Some say it's our future that's hanging fire. Popkin der Terosian runs the Silicon Valley Group, which makes the machines that make the microchips that will drive all of these new products. In the long run, as we lose production, which is product, we're not creating wealth, so we're basically borrowing and importing, eventually, we, we are just selling our rivers, our technology, our land, our real estate. You can't continue like this, so we have to change that. Now, Frox is not going to fly into the picture and save the day like Mighty Mouse. It is one small company, of course, but it does embody a real chance that we have here, Mac, to get back into the game, and it is a game with some mighty big stakes. Well, that's great for openers, but yeah. what more is it going to take? Well, that's exactly what it is, is an opener. And what it's probably going to take, a lot of people don't like the term industrial policy, but what it's probably going to take is some more involvement by the government. In fact, most of the people in this survey think that the government needs to come in and coordinate, pick out strategic technologies and say, this is where we're going to help industry compete 
as a, as a nation. You don't send, you know, we send a hockey team to the Olympics without a game plan. And this is what this is, is manufacturing. It's international competition. You need a game plan. Survey says, Uncle Sam, get busy. Maybe. Depends on who gets elected, I think. Oh, yeah. oh, oh there is that. That's right. The Republicans traditionally don't like the idea. All right. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Yeah.